This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to solve an absolute value equation. How do you do it? Well, before we get into the mechanics of solving one of those, uh, and there's several different forms to take a look at, let's talk about what an absolute value is. Well, absolute value is written with these vertical lines, and we put either a value or an expression inside, and then we figure out what to do with it. Um, so if that's what it looks like, then let's talk about how to evaluate or how to determine it. Well, let's get to the definition of absolute value. Absolute value is a pretty simple definition. It is really just the distance from zero. So when you're taking the absolute value of a quantity, you just figure out how far it is away from zero. So to do that, let's take a look at a number line. So this number line is going to be pretty advantageous for us to use. Um, it's always nice to look at a graphical approach when we look at these mathematical concepts and skills. So let's talk about what's the absolute value of 4. So the absolute value of 4 just means how far 4 is from 0. So if you look here, you can see that 4 is 4 units away from 0. Um, let's take a look at the absolute value of negative 4. So negative 4, absolute value, Hmm. Yep, four units away. You could see it's four units away. So it's just counting the distance from zero. Let's talk about how this works with equations. So let's start talking some algebra. What if we started putting some x's in here and say the absolute value of some quantity is equal to two. And this is how you would write it, right? The absolute value of x, some quantity, is equal to two. So if you think about it, you really are asking yourself, what places on the number line are two units away, right? Because absolute value means distance from zero. So I want to know what point or points on the number line are two units away. Well, if you look to the right of zero, you'd say, well, if I plant myself at two, two is two units away from zero. So the absolute value of two is two. It works. All right, let's try finding another value. What if we took the absolute value of negative two, right? If you're looking at negative two on the number line, you'd see that negative two is also two units away from zero. So it looks like this equation has two solutions. Interesting, good to know. So this isn't just a coincidence. If you took the absolute value of x is equal to three, you would see that there's two solutions to that problem too. So it's like you're asking yourself the absolute value of what is equal to three or which points on a number line are three units away. You'd say, well, one solution is three. The other solution is negative three. There's two solutions. And it works that way for nearly everything, except if you take the absolute value of zero, the absolute value of zero is your, well, you're saying which points on the number line are zero units away and that's zero. And watch out for the tricky one, the absolute value of a negative. Let's say you'd say the absolute value of some value x is equal to negative 5. And you'd say, well, what points on the number line are negative 5 units away? Wait a minute, negative 5 units away? You can't have a negative distance. It doesn't make any sense. So when you're talking about distances, you can't have the absolute value of a quantity equal to a negative it doesn't make any sense. There cannot be any point on the number line that's negative five units away. Okay, so if you ever see that, like the absolute value is equal to a negative, no solution. Okay, all right, so let's approach this now not from a graphical point of view. Let's approach this from a purely algebraic point of view. And I'm going to introduce a word to you, a nice college level word. So um, let's try a problem like the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 7. So let's say we had to solve this problem. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to solve this without using a graphical approach. But something we should have learned from the graphical approach is that there's always going to be two solutions anytime this value over here is a positive value. If it's 0, there's only one solution. And then if it's negative, there's no solution. So 
how do you approach it when there's a positive value here? Well, you bifurcate. Ooh, tricky word, right? Bifurcate means there's going to be two solutions. You're gonna fork this into two solution or, or split this into two solutions. All right, so one solution we found is one side we'd say of the number line was seven and the other side of the number line is negative seven. In other words, this value in here could be equal to seven and when you take the absolute value of it, yep, it's seven. The value in here could be equal to negative seven and when you take the absolute value of it, it'd also be equal to seven. So anytime you see absolute value, split this or bifurcate it into two equations and solve each of these separately and you'll get two solutions. So if you know anything about algebra, you're gonna add three to both sides and you're gonna get, if I add three to both sides, I'm gonna get 10. Add three to both sides here, I'm gonna get two X. If I add three, I get negative four. Here now you're gonna say, well, I'm gonna get rid of this two, so I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So you're gonna get X equals five. Here, if you divide both sides by two, you're gonna get X equals negative two. And there you go. And you could check to see that these are true by plugging those values in separately, one at a time. And you'll see that each one of them is equal to, uh, you would get seven on both sides, which would validate these two uh, solutions. So here's another absolute value equation. So what do you do? You'd say, well, all of this in here could be equal to one. Absolute value of one is one, so I basically do this. Another possible way to look at this is all of this value in here could be equal to negative one. And when I take the absolute value of it, it'll be equal to one. So the five minus three X could be equal to negative one. Or just think bifurcation. You're gonna split this absolute value equation into two separate equations and one of them is gonna be one, the other one's gonna be negative one. There you go. So you now solve this. So I'm gonna subtract five from both sides. I'm gonna get negative four here. If I subtract five from both sides here, I'm gonna get negative six. Now I'm gonna divide by negative three. Then I'm gonna get four thirds, right? A negative divided by a negative is a positive. I'm gonna do the same thing over here is divide both sides by negative three. You're gonna get two. There you have it. Now I'm leaving it to you, the viewer, to substitute those values back in and then demonstrate that the absolute value will be equal to one once you're done. So be warned of this type of problem. Um, if you're dealing with a situation where you're taking the absolute value and it's equal to a negative, be very careful because you might be tempted to go and do this and say, okay, I'm gonna bifurcate this problem. I'm gonna take one of them, negative three, and the other one's going to be the opposite, three. That's how we mechanically have done it in the past two examples. Um, and you might wanna solve this, right? You're gonna add four to both sides. So if I add four, I'm gonna get one. Here, I'm gonna add four, I'm gonna get seven. And then when you go to check it, you'll find out that you have a little bit of an issue here. If you put in one, one minus four is negative three. The absolute value of negative three is three, not negative three. This doesn't work. Wrong answer, bad answer there. Try seven, seven minus four is three. The absolute value of three is three, not negative three. See, the problem with this is you can never have a distance equal to a negative. It's, it doesn't make any sense. It's Ill illogical from the get-go. The distance from zero can never be a negative. So be wary of that. So you're gonna have to be careful with this type of problem too. Uh, a lot of people see the absolute value. They'll see a negative one side, automatically chalk this up to a no solution situation. Nope, not quite true. The goal when you're dealing with absolute value equations is first to get the absolute value alone. So on all the previous cases that we've looked at, the absolute value was alone on one side. So I don't have the absolute value alone, so none of the rules that we looked at really apply. So to get this absolute value 
alone. I'm going to unpeel the onion here and get rid of this 5 first. So in other words, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. If I subtract 5 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 12. And then to get this absolute value alone, I need to get rid of this negative 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So if you divide both sides by negative 2, you get 6. Now you'd think the absolute value of what quantity is equal to 6, you could do this graphically and get the two answers immediately. Uh, or you could do this algebraically by bifurcating. You're going to say that the absolute value of x is equal to one solution, or just x is equal to one solution, and x is equal to another solution by taking the right side, making one side positive and the other side negative. That's how you mechanically do it and say, yeah, hey, there's the two solutions, and it makes sense. 6 is 6 units away from 0. Negative 6 is also 6 units away from 0, so there are your two solutions. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our over 200 lessons, interactive quizzes, and, of course, instructional videos. Take care and have a great day. With absolute power comes absolute responsibility. Something like that. <laughs>